Have you ever stared up at the stars at night and wondered what, or maybe even who, is out there? This question has obsessed people's minds since, well, we've had minds that could obsess. And for one man in particular, this has been especially true. A man whose obsession with space, and more specifically the planet Mars, took the world by storm and helped change the way we look at the solar system. But he's done more than just influence our understanding of the solar system. He's also been a big influence on popular culture, inspiring the creation of science fiction stories and one of the most iconic superheroes. His work has even had a hand in inspiring a mass panic that swept across the United States. And no, I don't mean Elon. I mean him, Percival Lowell. But before he would make his impact on the world and inspire a nation to believe in life on the Red Planet, he spent 10 years living in and learning about Japan. Born in 1855, Percival was from a rich family in Boston, Massachusetts. A strong student, he graduated with a bachelor's in mathematics from Harvard and basically had all the prerequisites for becoming someone of importance in the future. And his life seemed to be going in that direction until a surprising turn of events. The first was when he broke off his engagement to Rose Lee, interestingly, the sister-in-law of the future president, Theodore Roosevelt. And the second came in 1883, when he decided to spend most of the next 10 years in Japan. You see, along with his skills in mathematics, Percival had a strong ability for learning languages and an itch to explore. So Percival would spend the next 10 years studying Eastern cultures, learning the languages, and trying to understand their different ways of life. And at the same time, he wrote books about what he learned. While in Asia, he would end up writing four books and even meeting the emperor of Korea during a diplomatic mission. These would be formative years for Percival and would cement his interest in studying other cultures, which might help explain why, when he was introduced to the idea that there might be evidence for life on Mars, his whole life moved in another direction. By 1890, it's apparent that Percival Lowell came across the work of an Italian astronomer, Giovanni Schiaparelli. In it, Giovanni spoke about an amazing discovery. He had discovered canals on Mars. This shook Lowell. Canals on Mars meant life on Mars. And maybe this is a good time to mention this. Giovanni's paper was originally written in Italian. The word he actually used was canali, which was wrongly translated into English as canal which is an intelligently designed structure, instead of the word channel, which is natural. Mistranslations. Keeping the world interesting. So Percival moved back to the U.S. with his new mission to study the canals on Mars. He began observing and documenting his findings and would end up writing his first book about Mars in 1895. In this book, he would pull from his experience in Japan, telling readers that they should not expect life on Mars to look the same as it is here on Earth, just as he observed that life in Japan was not the same as in America. Under changed conditions, life itself must take on other forms. In this first book, he put forth his observations and theory of life on Mars. He spoke about the straight lines that he saw on Mars, what he called canals, that crisscrossed the planet and seemed too orderly to be natural. And he spoke about the pools he witnessed at the cross points of the lines, something kind of like this. He believed these to be the last efforts of a drying and dying world to bring water from the poles of Mars to the rest of the planet. Percival would end up building his own observatory in Flagstaff, Arizona, and write three books about his Mars observations and theories. He continued his belief in life on Mars until the day he died, even after counter-evidence came forth from other observers stating the canals and pools were not there. This should not be seen as a mere wild man spouting radical claims, though. This was a new time in observation and study, and the idea of intelligent life on Mars seemed entirely possible. Percival's books would go on to inspire scientists and laymen alike. Even the world-renowned Tesla, um, Nikola Tesla, would get caught up in it. He observed radio signals in 1889 that he could not explain, and after being inspired by Percival's book, he would attribute the signal to life on Mars, a claim he continued to believe for the next 40 years. Percival's books would go on to inspire fiction writers as well. H.G. Wells started writing his novel War of the Worlds right after Percival's first book on Mars was released, and that novel would later be turned into an iconic radio program that may or may not have caused a mass panic when it aired in 1938. Percival's books would also inspire another writer, Edgar Rice Burroughs, who wrote the Barsom series, or you might know it by one of its main characters' names, John Carter. 
This book series has served as the inspiration for countless science fiction authors and was one of the main inspirations for Superman. Eventually, Percival's proclamations about the canals on Mars will be proven false, but that wouldn't stop some from calling him one of the most influential popularizers of planetary science. And that's it. Except, actually, there's one more thing. Lowell also discovered Pluto. Well, sort of. In his later years, Percival became obsessed with a new idea. He made calculations based off of the movements of Neptune and Uranus and predicted that there must be a ninth planet causing their irregular movements. After his sudden death in 1916, his observatory continued the search. They would eventually find Pluto right where Percival predicted. Surprisingly, though, they would also find out that the data Percival used to predict Pluto's location was completely incorrect. They just got, like, super lucky. Okay, now that's it. There were so many tangents I could have gone down, but YouTube videos have to end eventually. Make sure you like and subscribe, and follow me on Twitter, too, if you want to find out what's going on in between videos. Also, let me know what you thought of the video in the comments, or you can answer this question. When do you think the first person will go to Mars? Thanks, everyone.